Good evening, everyone. It's a joy to have you join us tonight for Bible study. I so take delight in seeing all of you together here in the sanctuary. We appreciate those who will be joining us online. I do want to say that tonight's session will be shorter than usual. Uh, we want to accommodate uh, those who will need to leave home in time to uh, get here for our 7 o'clock business meeting. So our session uh, will probably end somewhere uh, before 7.40. But we want to take the time tonight to thank God for his word. And uh, we're going to ask that you uh, uh, take a moment to join me as we go to God in prayer before we begin our session. Father, how wonderful it is to gather in your house tonight. How wonderful it is to see each other's faces and hear each other's voices. We thank you, God, for the opportunity and privilege that you have put before us to gather in your name and allow your word to speak to us. And we pray, Father, that our minds and our hearts will be open to the movement of the Spirit, that you will teach us, you guide us, and help us to understand uh, those things that you would have us to understand and to make use of them in our daily living. We pray for our congregation as a whole. We pray that the word indeed would be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. We give you the praise, honor, thanks, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. The subtitle of this segment in our study on the Psalms as it relates to the character of God for tonight is God's goodness can be seen in his justice and in his mercy. And I want to emphasize the his, God's goodness, his goodness, God's justice, his justice, and his mercy, God's mercy. Because sometimes when we think of justice and mercy, we think in terms of them being uh, polar opposites. And we think in terms of them being one or the other, not both and. Uh, we think in terms of, if we're talking about justice, that means that a person is getting what they deserve. But if you talk about mercy, we tend to think in terms of God withholding what we really deserve. And I was preparing for our lesson, I remember a story about a lady who had gone to a photographer to get her photograph taken. And uh, the photographer took the photograph and it was in those days when it was an instant development, so he called her back sometime later, told her her photo was ready. And she came to the uh, studio to uh, look at her photo. He handed the photo to her and she looked at it and she put her hands on the hip. She said, why? This photo doesn't do me justice. The doctor said, lady, you don't need justice, you need mercy. <laughs> sometimes we, we think about God in terms of what uh, we deserve and what we don't deserve. And uh, I believe tonight uh, we need to consider uh, what our lesson has for us. I want you to turn to Psalm 73. And uh, we want to look at one of 11 psalms written by Asaph, who was the chief musician under David. And uh, he is credited with writing 12 of the psalms. And uh, tonight we will only have time to look at one. We'll be looking at three others under this section. God goodness can be seen in his mercy, his justice, and his mercy. I want to ask a, a few questions. Um, I, I've been praying that uh, you have been and will be helped as we study these psalms to see them as an invitation to be honest with God. Not accusing anybody of being dishonest, but Sometimes we may cloak our, try to camouflage our, hide 
how we really feel or what we really think from God. We know that's an impossibility because God knows everything and he certainly knows us. But I want to ask, have there been times, you don't have to answer this out loud, but just for you to think about it. Have there been times when you have been angry with God? Have you ever been impatient with God? Mm -hmm. Have you ever accused God of allowing you to be treated unjustly? If any of those things are true for you, I want you to know that you know how the psalmist felt. You know how this writer feels when you read what is recorded in Psalm 73. Uh, these kinds of thoughts and feelings that are found in this psalm are known as laments. And we said uh, uh, in a previous study that a lament includes complaints and some expressions of dissatisfaction on the part of the psalm. Sometimes a uh, lament will uh, make an accusation against God or make a demand of God. Many of us uh, may come to a point where to think of questioning God about anything, demanding anything of God, or complaining to God, it's kind of out of our comfort zone. We were not uh, uh, conditioned to approach God with complaints and questions and, and our dissatisfaction. And uh, I want you to know that uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying that we ought to complain or question. I, I'm just calling attention to the fact that in the book, in the Bible, we have in the record complaints. We have in the record questions. We have uh, these things that are included in the scriptures. And one of the things I like about the Bible, the Bible is its own best commentary on itself. And in Romans 15, 5, the Bible says, for everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. And so all I'm saying is that we can learn and be helped by psalms of lament like we can be helped by other portions of scripture. If nothing else, it might teach us not to complain so much or not to distrust God so much because with the complaints, we see the movement of God in the lives of the writers that helps us to know that somewhere along the line, they came to the conclusion that God is still on his throne. Mm -hmm. And that he really indeed can be trusted even when things don't seem to be going the way we think they ought to go. Okay. So, I want to ask you uh, if you would look at the very first verse of Psalm 73. It says, Truly God is good to Israel, to such as are pure in heart. The word begins with truly or surely or indeed. So it is a statement that the Psalms make with, it's an emphatic statement. He's declaring the goodness of God and there is no uh, sense of doubt or, or you know, uh, in, in, in decision on the part of the psalmist he is reflecting on the fact that he knows that God has been good to his nation. And so he states that clearly in, uh, in this psalm. Now, when we, when we look at that statement, it, 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 it helps us to, uh, I guess, try to navigate through this psalm and, and figure out why it is then that he makes the following statement. He says, Truly God is good to Israel, and he's good to such as, and anybody who has pure heart. But he begins the next sentence with a but. You know how we are. Okay. This is true, but. Okay. He said, but as for me, 
My feet had almost stumbled. My step had nearly slipped. He said, I, 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 almost, I almost made a bad mistake. I almost made a bad misstep. And the reason why I almost slipped and I almost stumbled is I was envious of the boastful when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. I, I think some of us have walked down that road a little bit. That's what he's actually saying is what we say sometimes. I try to live right. I, I try to do the right thing. I'm a committed Christian. You know, I attend church. I, I pray. I, 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 I support the church financially. I try to do the right thing. I try to treat people right. And I'm having a struggle. But I see that old booger down the street. Ain't no good doing everything but what God says a person ought to do. And they are just, you know, hitting every beat. Ain't nothing going wrong in their life. And so he's saying, I'm, I'm, I'm finding myself a child of God, being envious of people that don't care a thing about God. Hmm. Am, I, am I connecting with anybody ever, ever, ever had something go on in your life, make, make you feel that way? But that's, that's the message the psalm is trying to convey. And, uh, and, and it relates to, again, this uh, honest uh, sharing of his experience uh, as he uh, not only thought about, but but uh, but actually lived uh, as a person who uh, had faith and hope in God. Verse four. Uh, he goes on to describe why he was envious. Then look, look, notice how he says, "For there are no pains in their death." When 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 someone in my family died. Heart broke, head hung down. But these people, when they go, they have a death experience. They don't fade. Uh, their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, nor do, nor are they plagued as other men. Therefore, pride serves as their nectar. Violence cover their garments. Their eyes bulge with abundance. And they got, you know, gleam, gleam, and everything. <laughs> and and uh, uh, they have more than a heart could wish. They scoff and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak lawfully. They set their mouth against heaven and their tongue uh, through the earth. They, he saying, they just seem to get away with everything. Nothing seems to face them. They encounter no trouble. One of the things I think we have to be careful about is concluding that everything is fine in other people's lives when we really don't know. What's going on? When I was uh, 17 years old, I had the blessing and privilege of uh, carrying a briefcase to work as a teenager. And uh, the company I worked for had uh, several buildings. There was a factory on one side of the street, factory and office uh, complex on the other side of the street. And the uh, uh, employees of the company were scratching their head trying to figure out how could a teenager be working for this company, toting a briefcase to work. I was trying to figure that out myself. But I, know I, I, I knew what the answer was. And, uh, and uh, I had the opportunity to witness to a lot of people because I could simply say to them, how did you get this job? I said, I prayed for it. Okay. And that was my answer. I prayed for it. And, I, and so it gave me an opportunity to tell a story. They, did, they saw me carrying the briefcase on that job, but they didn't see all of those nights that I washed dishes mm -hmm. and all of those days that I cut, cut grass. <laughs> I worked for an Italian restaurant. And uh, almost every night that I went to work, I came home smelling like garbage. There were some nights when um, I was so tired, I didn't know I, could, I was going to make it home. Because we washed dishes, not with a mechanical dishwasher, but we washed hundreds of dishes by hand. 
And there were nights when my partner didn't show up. I had to do all that by myself. And so they saw me carrying the briefcase, but they never saw me in that kitchen washing those dishes. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people we look at, we see from one perspective what life for them is like, but we don't see the other side. Mm -hmm. And some of the people we're envious of, we would not be envious of if we knew the whole story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And so, so this is the perspective that the psalmist is presenting. And sometimes I think that, uh, uh, you know, we could uh, take ourselves and put ourselves right in the pages of this book because they reflect what is oftentimes our experience and our reality. All right. And so uh, I want to just take a moment to pause right, right here before we go on to see if there's anybody here in the sanctuary who, who can bear witness <laughs> to what I'm talking about mm -hmm. by, by maybe some ex personal examples from your own life or if you've got a question or comment you, want, you, want, you wish to share. Anybody? It's funny you say that because I actually had this conversation with my oldest daughter mm -hmm. and she was like, you know, uh, how you see these, what you would say, rich people yeah. like billionaires and all that. I said, but you didn't see them when they were working in the garage, <laughs> toiling away when they were cold and then not have, you only see them today, but you don't need, know the hours that they put in when they didn't have no social life, when they was out yeah. making their business. Yeah. And she was like, well, that's true. I was like, do you see any pictures of those dudes when they were young? Right. I was like, no, because they was on the grindstone. They were working. Right. I said, now you just see them today and you see all the flashy cars, but it's the same way with us. You know, I've been at UPS 24 years, and mm -hmm. you didn't see all the days I went in extra and worked hard to be where I'm at now. Uh, you didn't see the 20-hour the right. shifts, but, you know, you get to see me on this side. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Your pastor, I, 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 yeah. Well, church, I was in church. I mm -hmm. was in church. I just, the, the leg work, that you have to endure the uh, long hours, the sweat equity, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that you have to sacrifice to make a business successful. Yeah. And when you ask, when you extend, you know, the invitation for people to come on board, <laughs> their first response is, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's nothing for you to do but come on board, right? and take advantage of the position to be an offer to because the groundwork, the mud, the sweat, the equity, it's already been done. Amen. So they don't they don't see it. They look they looking beyond, you know, what you have to actually do to build that, you know, brick by brick mortar. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and God will give mm -hmm. us day by day, every day, what we need for that day. Amen. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and whatever uh, I guess we credit to ourselves or whatever is credited to us by others really is credited to God. Amen. 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 You, you can, you can, you, you can, uh, you can search the internet today and find out how many people died just today. And, and then there were some people who didn't die today. Uh, they opened their eyes, but they couldn't get out of bed. And, 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 and God gives us what we need. Yes, he does. And, yes, and none of us are, are shortchanged by him yes, in any way. I, I think every day for the life of a believer ought to be gained with some expression of thanks to God. Amen. Me too. Yes, sir. And, and if God uh, brings us into a new day, we all can be assured that whatever we need for that day yes. is already, already set in place. Mm. That's right. And, and there's no real reason to be envious of anybody. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. Because God's going to take care of you. That's right. And provide what you need. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. But, but on this fleshly mm -hmm. side of us, mm -hmm. we, we can become green eyed mm -hmm. and, and, and wonder inside why Brother Smith is doing so well. And I'm, I'm just barely making it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And can I say this, yeah. Brad? Say it. <laughs> Our measurement is incorrect. Mm -hmm. We use one another yeah. as the book line. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And we're not. Yeah. Will we understand that Christ mm -hmm. is the book line? Mm -hmm. Then all of that dwindles. Right. And that diminishes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as we grow on our Christian journey, we begin to uncover Amen. that we are not the bookmark. That's right. So that envy yeah. may not even be there. Amen. Amen. Because God really does just have what's for me. That's right. For me. That's right. Yeah. And so I don't mm -hmm. need to look outside <laughs> of what He's provided me with. That's right. I need to make sure that I'm in a space and a place Amen. that I'm capitalizing on what He's given. Me, Amen. absolutely. Not Amen. the other people right. that I've marked as my bookmark yeah. or my family. Yeah. 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 Every one of us oh, is so man. unique and special to yeah. God. Yeah. He, he didn't make us exactly like another mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. I don't know the exact text, text now, but some of you may know where it is. There's a, I think it's in one of Paul's letters to the church at Corinth. He said, uh, some people, they measure themselves by themselves, right. Right. and in doing so, they are not wise. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. note, note also in those verses that I read, this is uh, the psalmist's uh, assessment of what the wicked do. He, he talks about the fact that they, look at verse 11, they say, how does God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? Mm -hmm. And he's saying that the, the wicked have an attitude that says, <coughs> That God really doesn't care about my wrongdoing. <laughs> I can do anything I want to do, and and uh, God 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 doesn't know something. Mm -hmm. That was that was uh, what He charged them with saying. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people do live as though they don't believe that God has mm -hmm. universal surveillance <laughs> <laughs> of everything. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all night, all day, God's eyes are wide open, and nothing is hidden from Him. And, and but you got people living as though there is no God. Sometimes I, I, uh, I mean, and you all, you know, when you uh, uh, take in the news, uh, it's hard to figure out how some people can do some of the things they do. Uh, and, and and genuinely believe that there is a God. Right, right, right. right. I, you know, I would tell my friends, they would uh, tease me sometimes about some things, that, some things that I wouldn't do. I'd say, well, I, I, the reason for that is not because I'm so holy. Right. I say, a lot of that is because I'm so scared. Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. right. <laughs> Amen. That's it, that's it. That's there, it. Are, there are some things that, that uh, I don't want God to catch me that's doing. That's right, that's right, that's right. I mean, you know, and so, so, so uh, sometimes people do wickedness because it indicates that there's no fear of God on their life. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they don't act wisely because there's a missing component, and that is reverence for and respect for God. That, that will keep you from doing some things. Right, when my, when my daughter became, uh, started uh, dating, I had this rule, I, I don't know how well it worked, but <laughs> if she was going to go out with someone, she had to uh, have them meet me. That's right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and not just to say, hello, Mr. Jones, mm -hmm. I would take him up to my study <laughs> and interrogate him. That's right, that's right, that's right. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And because I wanted to know. And I wanted them to know, yeah, yeah. amen, that uh, they ought to be scared of somebody about something. <laughs> All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But, but, but he, he looked at the wicked. He's basically saying they're acting like they don't, they're not afraid of God, and they're saying all kinds of things against heaven that they ought not be saying because they don't treat God or take God seriously. Then from, from that section of this particular psalm, if you look at verse 13 to 17, the psalmist wonders if he had dedicated his life to the Lord for nothing. <laughs> Surely I have clean 
my heart in vain and wash my hands in innocence. For all day long, I have been plagued and chastened every morning. If I had said I would speak thus, behold, I would have been untrue to the generation of your children. When I thought how to understand this, it was too painful for me. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood therein. And I, I, hear, I hear the psalmist saying that uh, a couple things. One is, um, you remember when Peter and the disciples asked Jesus, he said, Jesus, we've left everything for you. What shall we have that for? Right. Jesus said, you left your mom and your sister, your house and your land. Uh, you're going to get that back plus more. <laughs> okay. And, uh, and, and sometimes uh, believers may be at a spot where they wonder, is it worth it? Has it been worth it? What I've dedicated my life to, uh, is, is, it, is it really going to pan out like the Lord says it will? He says, he says, um, I have. I, I, I'm wondering if, if I if I've done this in in, in vain. <coughs> and of course, uh, uh, the answer we know that he come, comes to is no. And he said, I, I didn't say everything I wanted to say because I didn't want to have a negative effect on your children, the generation of your children. And he, he says, if I had said what I wanted to say, I would have been saying something untrue. Mm -hmm. And there are times right. when it pays uh, not to say some things, even That's though you feel like saying, That's that way you don't have to take it back. Wow. <laughs> All right. And some people say, well, if you think it, you might as well say it. I don't hold to that. Mm -mm. No. Yeah, I think you ought to, you ought to <laughs> keep some things to yourself. <laughs> All right. Don't say everything you what? think out loud, all right? And, uh, and, and especially when you recognize that the words that you say may have an impact or effect on somebody else in a negative kind of way. So, so he says essentially, for the sake of the generation of children to children, I did say some things that I felt like saying, but I realize now that had I said them, I would have been saying something that was untrue. And then he says, when I thought how to understand this, it was too painful to me until I went into the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, that's, uh, I, always, I always like the fact that in these Psalms of Lament, there comes a place where it seems like the light comes on. Mm -hmm. And uh, the psalm, the content of the psalm does not tell us what happened or what he saw or what he experienced in the sanctuary, but something happened. Like that song when the man says, I went to church one night and my heart just wasn't right, but something got a hold of me. <laughs> and and uh, I, I try to promote the idea that you ought not attend church or go to worship service based on how you feel. <laughs> because you feel and, and change. And sometimes it's on those days when you act counter to how you feel, that you have your best, mm -hmm. most wonderful encounter with God. Because you didn't let the devil keep you from the blessing that God had in store for you. Didn't feel like going to church, but you went anyhow. Didn't feel like singing, but you sang anyhow. You didn't feel like praying, but you prayed anyhow. You didn't feel like giving, but you gave anyhow. And God honored yes, what you did <laughs> in spite of how you felt. And you came out better all the way around than you ever imagined. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes we are robbed of what we could have by us failing to do what we should do. Mm -hmm. He says, I was trying to understand what I was going through. And it was a painful uh, experience just trying to understand it until I went into the house of God. 
And so I don't know if there was some, uh, you know, spiritual encounter that took place. I don't know if it was a song that, that the choir was singing uh, or something that was shared as the word was read. But you know how that is. You can have a worship experience where song, prayer, sermon, testimony, or something will touch your life and lift you, amen, to the point where you wonder why you even felt the way you felt. You know, that, that, that just, just, just whatever that thing is, or those things that transpire when you gather together with the people of God to worship the true and living God. God is real, yes. and his yes. presence is real, and he makes himself known in various ways. And I just believe that the psalmist had a, a spiritual encounter with God by being in the sanctuary where he ought to be and, uh, and, 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 and gave God a chance to work in his life in a way that perhaps would have not uh, uh, been otherwise. And he said, uh, I, I, I had a different perspective then. Yeah. Okay. I, saw things, I saw things differently. Um, what do you, what do you, what do all, what do you think uh, perhaps happened when he went to the sanctuary? Uh, -huh. All right. Okay. Uh, I will, this will be the final point I want to make. One of the things that happened is right there in the Bible that we can see. He says in verse seventeen. Until I went in the sanctuary of God, and and whatever this took place, uh, we don't know the details of it. But the latter part of that same verse says, "Then I understood therein." All right. Okay. And uh, he 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 is realizing that the people he were envying are the last people on the planet that he should be in, in the end because their faith is one that he really doesn't want to experience himself. Um, there is, there's more value to uh, living for God and with God than, than we can really <coughs> Uh, no, not. Uh, it, it is through the revelation given to John that we get a glimpse of the glorious, wonderful state of being and environment that heaven would be. Uh -huh. And uh, by faith we <coughs> trust and are assured that it's real. Um, and just like we shout and rejoice over what's waiting for us, it really is an agonizing thought to think of what's going to happen to the wicked. <coughs> um, I don't like aches and pains. I, 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 I try to keep from getting them, and when I do get one, I, I want it to be gone as quickly as possible. <coughs> So the Bible says that there is an everlasting torment mm. for the for the wicked, for the unrighteous. That means that you going to you go they, they will incur hurt that's nonstop. Never no no end to it at all. Never stop. I had a I had a tooth worked on a couple of weeks ago and they gave me a painkiller. Hey, thank God for painkillers. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. And, uh, and, 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 and Brother uh, Dennison, my, my major concern was when the painkiller was going to wear off. But thank God, I never did have any discomfort after they finished the work. But what I'm trying to say is there will be no painkiller. Mm. No aspirin, no Tylenol, mm. no anything mm. for the agony that the wicked will have to experience. And so I see the psalmist saying, well, let me shut my mouth. I ain't got nothing to do with it. When I consider what is in store for me, 
compared to what's in store for them. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I got to change my mind mm -hmm. about what I, how I see other people that I've been envious of. And so he says to us tonight that the goodness of God is, is, can be found both in his justice and in his mercy. God is not good only when things are what we call going good for us. Yeah, that's right. When things are not going good for us, God is still good. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the point I think the psalmist is, is helping us to understand when we read Psalm 73. That, you know, he's not good today and bad tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. The scripture says God is good. And his mercy is how long? Forever. Everlasting. And his truth and doings for how long? All generations. Amen. I like to tell people that uh, I believe my grandmother was a Christian, and that's a generation. I believe my mother was a Christian, that's a generation. I believe that I'm a Christian, and that's a generation. I believe I got some children and uh, nephews, nieces, that are grand grandchildren that are Christian. That's a generation. And, and all of those wonderful truths that my grandmother learned and lived by didn't expire in her generation. Amen. 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 They have lasted for four generations. And God is still good. Amen. He's good right now. Amen. And we ought to celebrate and praise him and thank him for his continuous goodness to us. Yeah. And, uh, and, 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 and and open our hearts to him mm -hmm. uh, in an honest way. And uh, give him a chance to challenge our, our wrong conceptions, our bad beliefs, even about him. And uh, God knows how to straighten us out. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> he does. Yeah. Amen. He knows how to straighten us out. We we can't intimidate God like God gonna get God gonna get us uh, you know nervous and, and worried because we got some crazy idea floating around. Our head. That, that's not gonna that's not gonna diminish or move God uh, not one bit. He can handle uh, our insecurities. Amen. Amen. And deal with uh, those things that we're not quite sure and are uncertain about. And uh, like a loving father. Uh, he'll, he'll set us down, but then have a conversation and you have a talk mm -hmm. about, Amen. <laughs> about those things mm -hmm. that are healthy and good for us. Amen. God's goodness can be seen. We don't always see it, but God's goodness can be seen in his justice and in his mercy. Amen. Father, well, thank you that you are good. Someone says that you're good all the time, and that all the time you're good. Thank you, God, for those things about you that are unchangeable, that uh, are true all the time. I pray, Father, with my brothers and sisters. I pray for my brothers and sisters. We pray together that you would help us, Lord, to uh, have the kind of walk with you that will inform us to have a better sense of how your truths apply to us and what they mean to us day by day. Thank you, God, for the indwelling of your Holy Spirit. Help us, God, to hear him clearly. Yeah. Yeah. Be made strong by uh, surrendering ourselves totally and completely to him. Yes. The word says that we are to be filled continuously with the Holy Spirit. Right. Even now, fill us with your spirit so that we can live the victorious life you have us to live. Help us, God, not to, as our sister said, use the wrong me uh, metrics, the wrong measure for what's going on <coughs> and what you're doing. We thank you now in Jesus' name for his sake. 
Amen. 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 Thank you all. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.